Hello, hello, comic book junkies. It's the Frog Queen here, and I know it's been a little while. Thank you for joining me. Uh, today we're going to talk about um, a collaboration book between Scotty Young and George Corona called The Me You Love in the Dark. You know, I love my goth themes. I thought I'd be a little bit extra witchy, a little extra witchy today. I got my witch hat on. Isn't it cute? Boop. Anyway, a little extra witchy for it. This is a dramatic, gothic type style book. Very kind of different in a way for Scotty Young because we're used to seeing things like Twig and of course uh, Middle West. I, you know, I think goth is in his scope for sure. Yeah, I'd love to hear more goth stories from Scotty. Anyway, I actually wrote an article. I wrote all my thoughts on this book down in an article that you can read on thefrogqueen.com. So I'm going to just like ad lib a little bit off of that article. Um, of course, if you go to thefrogqueen.com, I do write articles more regularly probably than videos. Anyways, trying to, trying to. Not so much lately. I'm, I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's just get into it. <laughs> So uh, my reason for grabbing this book um, at all, in general, however, was not based on my love uh, for stories about artists, because this is a story about artists, um, but instead it was based on my love of the paranormal. Uh, the fact that I'm an artist experiencing a large period of creative block, illustration-wise, <laughs> is a bit of a coincidence in terms of reading something I can relate to. Of course, the fact that Scotty Young was writing something a bit darker and more adult was another reason for me grabbing this book. Not to forget the fact that I really love the art of George Corona. Uh, so, longtime fan of both of these creators uh, and the collaborations that they have been putting together for the past few years. Yeah, I needed to get this book. Now, I'm, I know I'm definitely late to getting it. It's been out for a bit. Uh, it came out in March 2022 uh, with the serialized version um, in the previous year. I missed the serialized version, unfortunately. But hey, better late than pregnant, especially if you live in the United States now. Yeah, anyway, the story follows an artist named Ro, uh, who moves into an old house in a rural location in order to find some inspiration for a new set of paintings. Uh, the house she moves into is well known to be haunted, and I'm going to try my best not to spoil the story, but my motto for my reviews going forward is basically read them at your own risk and watch them at your own risk, you know? Uh, so I feel like this story in particular, is more about mm, the dark and trapped emotions associated with creative blocks rather than anything paranormal. I mean, particularly as an artist, um, the struggle to come up with something new and different while also tapping into like your deeper self <laughs> is like a relatable struggle to me. I mean, 100%. Uh, I'm kind of reading other stories that have this kind of writer's block trope um, that is also mixed with elements of the paranormal, like Brian Arzarello and Maria Lovett's Faithless uh, absolutely is kind of in that vein as well. I think it's fairly obvious that pairing creativity with the paranormal is a good match because the idea that artistic talent and or creativity come from the gods or paranormal beings is not a new one. Um, it has been prevalent a prevalent theme throughout history. The ancient Greeks, for example, often talked about this in mythology, like the muses and various gods dedicated to bestowing innovation, creativity, and artistic talent on random mortals. Um, that's been in many stories. Uh, for Further to this, the idea that artistic innovation itself comes from a dark part of you or your soul or psyche, um, that's like that old trope of the suffering brooding artist, for instance. Um, the very idea that creative talent comes from a place of darkness and some dark force rather than something benevolent, it, it's not a new concept and was seen a lot in like Puritan cultures, right? 
So this story feels like an exploration of creativity rather than like a general haunting story, you know? In fact, it isn't really a haunting story at all. <laughs> the interactions Ro has with uh, the being that's in her house is actually much more of like a comforting one. <laughs> they have like a decent relationship in the beginning. She gains great friendship and inspiration uh, from the spirit at first, uh, and it wouldn't be much of a story, however, if it were to end that way. So, spoiler alert, <laughs> the spirit isn't really all that nice. Um, it's at this point that the story really becomes less paranormal again and feels like the story more of like a battered woman or some domestic abuse story. Uh, the red flags start to unfurl themselves before disaster falls. Um, and this is when the story does take that domestic abuse sort of uh, theme and turn. And we see Scotty talking about other things too, like themes like how you can't force creativity. <laughs> and uh, that when you do, your progress is stalled. Um, so that comes up a bit in the book as well. Um, let's see, what else? There are a lot of other great themes to this story, like the danger of isolation when in a new relationship. And I think uh, isolation in general came up probably not just due to the solitary practice of most artists, but also because of COVID at the time it came out, you know, 2001. So um, also the pressures of creating art under a deadline, things like self-confidence and imposter syndrome. Um, so many really good adult themes in this book that, you know, I definitely identified with. Um, in conclusion, I really like this story. <laughs> it carries so much more deeper themes and meaning than simply serving as another haunted house story. Uh, the idea and themes that are explored are, are very adult. So again, this isn't for children at all. Wouldn't recommend it for anyone under than 14 probably, but you know, use your best judgment as a parent and whatever, a uh, person who takes care of little people. Uh, but yeah, I really love it. It's gorgeous. The artwork, I, you know, I can't say much about the artwork. Everybody knows how much I really like George. Um, I think it's a beautiful book. And uh, yeah, they do really impart, like most of the story, I should say, most of the story is told um, through the art, which is so important in comics, you know, showing, not telling. Um, so yeah, a lot of the story, I'd say the majority of the story is, is portrayed in the art and not, um, and not the script. And, I mean, in terms of conversation, there really isn't a whole lot um yeah there's not it's it's a fairly quick read for that reason um so I find you know sitting and really staring at the artwork is where most of the story is um and you do get that that really those really good feels <laughs> it's actually negative feels those really good feels of like isolation and knowing what Roe is going going through as well um in the way that the panels unfold anyway I think that's it from me. I know I was kind of like reading off of my article a little bit there. So, you know, my eyes are probably darting around my screen here. I try not to do that. But, uh, you know, no one's perfect. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And I uh, hope to have something else out soon. Maybe a deep dive on some Beastars or maybe something just super random that I'm reading that we haven't talked about yet. Uh, again, I'm the Frog Queen. Don't forget to like and comment. Subscribe if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching to the end. And until next time, read something good. Bye.